Previously on Paranormal Site, The Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. <laughs> Spectre of the Spirit Board, Spectre of the Spirit Board, Spectre of the Spirit Horde. Please come this way. Please come on over. Please come to me. Please visit us. <laughs> <laughs> Please come on me. <laughs> and now back to Paranorma site. Hello! Bay. Back with some more Paranorma site, The Seven Mysteries of Anjo. When we last left off, it's beginning to look a lot like Corpse Party. Everywhere I die. Oh, God damn it. I'm fucking back at Corpse Party again. It's two high school girls. They're summoning some shit in the classroom. I say this story. I don't know one of these girls is gonna have a weird big brother complex, and the other one's gonna talk about buttering up their pooper real good. Fortunately, no. This this game is not course party, and in fact, it's actually way scarier. With uh, high school students Yako and Mio here summoning his spirit and learning that their recently departed friend had in fact not killed themselves. And oh yeah, Yako acquired a curse stone too. She can kill anybody with sound if they listen to it for like 30 seconds. Which kind of sounds like the douchey guy's move, but way worse. And it's not long before she's already getting assaulted by a curse bearer. Mio stays behind to fight, and Yako thankfully- Oh, okay, God, a janitor is here to help us. Bear tell her where Mio is. Oh shit, she's freaky dead. Oh, that's right. I forgot the janitor is actually a psychopath. What was I thinking? Never mind. Get out of here, janitor. And oh God, my other teacher has a curse stone. Oh, fuck it. He's crazy too. Oh, Jesus Christ, I'm on fire. Oh, dead. Actually, technically, I wasn't on fire. I was stabbed or something. Yeah, you guys clarified the, the whole thing with the, the fire has nothing to do with the, the curse stone. Essentially, what the janitor told Yako was to scream fire because if, it's actually better to say fire in a dire situation than saying help because doing that kind of leads to bystander syndrome, apparently, where people just don't do anything. But if you say fire, then people generally tend to, to jump to action, which is... Interesting. Apparently that was taught in a lot of schools. I don't think it was ever taught in any of my schools. I think I never had a need to actually say it. I might've been totally screwed otherwise. But I, I just, I, my, my, when I heard them say fire, my brain immediately went to the, one of the mysteries of Hanjo because that was literally mentioned in there, the fire clapper, right? Saying fire, fire. But that's Haraway's curse. And that wouldn't really make sense here. So yeah, all that really happened was Mr. Rashi arrived and basically killed us with his curse stone, which has actually now locked us out of the rest of Yako's stuff until we can get rid of the stone, which is interesting. This really is kind of like a making me wonder how this game's story and its uh, timeline is going to work. So seemingly I'm going to have to do it in Tetsuo's side, which makes me think that is there going to be a path where, where then I have to make a choice myself, the player, Nico B? to uh to take his curse stone and then there's gonna be a path where i didn't do it or something because it seems like by default he will have the curse stone so i have to do something by the way you guys also pointed out actually some really uh cool additional meta stuff here so apparently if you play yako before playing uh haraway you will actually be locked out of uh picking the option to not tell the janitor that mio is inside because I was right. I did not misremember. It was revealed on Haraway's side that the janitor looked suspiciously like the crazy psycho murderer Nejima. And maybe he had potentially been released on good behavior or something. I don't know. Which seems kind of fucking weird to me for a convicted killer. So only after learning that information are we actually allowed to make that decision. That's that's really interesting because we, we wouldn't know that, right? We wouldn't know that there was any reason to not trust the janitor. We just seem like we're screwed, right? But it's showing how we're taking knowledge that we, we as the player, only us could possibly know. And using that to save other curse bearers in this little timeline we have. So yeah, this game's getting hella meta. And they're really driving that, that point home too, by making it so you can't just like, oh yeah, pick the other option because of reasons. That's really cool, actually. It really does make me wonder then how this this is all possible, right? It is very much an Uchikoshi type of uh, plot mechanism they got going on here. But anyway, last episode, uh, Alni Craft said, let's just collectively thank Richter and Mio, because really, if it weren't for them, we would definitely be collecting soul dregs as Haraway and Yako right now. God damn, you're right. You are definitely right. Haraway definitely has some bloodlust, and Yako is already see showing that she's got some as well. Shogo didn't really have any buddy there to, to to talk him out of it and tetsuo i don't know tetsuo seems like he has it all together though the voice did say that he did have a desire for the right of resurrection i i don't know 
but it seems like he's already no he's already aware of this so I, it seems it's hard to believe that he would actually go through with this at all this is why the buddy system is so important guys especially if you get fucking possessed by an evil demon curse make sure you got a buddy with you okay so you can talk you out of murdering everybody but Aldi, thank you so much for your incredibly enlightening comment and it is that reason you are comment of the day by the way you guys might have noticed last episode actually got flagged by youtube for uh the topic of suicide and uh i i, I don't know actually how that happened I've never actually seen that happen before. I mean, that that has been said in other videos previously, but I guess it either got said too many times or maybe it was a combination of that and the thumbnail, maybe, even though that technically was Mio and wasn't that she like killed herself. I, I don't know, to be honest, but I actually immediately flagged my video for limited ads and I actually had no way of even like disputing it, which kind of sucked. I don't know, it, maybe the game said it too many times and it like triggered a thing. It almost makes you wonder if you like say a word too many times, the YouTube just like immediately flags it. But it was super weird because I, I, the fact that I just couldn't dispute it was really odd. But honestly, if, the, if it really had to do with the thumb, the thumb is it was just ridiculous because the thumb doesn't even show anything. It, technically, the vi video previously also showed a dead person and it didn't trigger that. I guess their eyes just look too fucked up. Anyway, what I'm, I'm trying to say is thanks, YouTube. You bastards. But anyway, uh, so we're now locked out of Yako's side, which means that uh, we are only left with Tetsuo, and it looks like we are actually about to talk to uh, Mr. Arashi right here. So let's uh, hop to it. Uh, I assume that w one of the, those game overs, by the way, was the one you guys were referring to. Actually, no, it's, it probably was. It was the one where I died to Mr. Arashi, right? That was probably the one that you guys said was like the one that was missable, poten potentially. The other said you could still get it, but it was, it was seemingly hard. I think I actually saw the achievements on uh, the the Steam thing too that showed that far few people got the achievement where you died to Mr. Arashi. So that would make a lot of sense. All right, so how for the Curse Bears Part 2. Susumi and Areo decided to collect the curse stones as soon as possible before they become the cause of an unprecedented tragedy. The two obtain the foot washing mansion from Yutaro Namagaki and head to their next or de destination. The thing is, though, like, the reason why I'm kind of like, how is this timeline thing working here? Like, I feel like the only way that this would make any sense is that I have to do something as the player to get this item from this guy. Because why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't they have already gotten this from them? Unless like the 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 un Nico bead scenario here, right? The where I had like no player input is actually Tetsuo dying here to this guy. Like this guy kills him and continues to go on his merry way. Actually, when does uh when does Shogo run into Tetsuo? I think it's actually around here. I think they'd still be alive. Oh well, whatever. Let's go, let's fucking find out. Mito Richo Park. 1 a.m. A strange tiny man. Excuse me. Sorry to bother you, but we have some questions for you. B what? Uh, are you with the police? I haven't done anything. Don't worry. This isn't an interrogation or anything. We just want to talk. You're Hideki Arashi, right? The historian? We know who you are, so this won't take long. But since we saw you here, we'd just like to ask you a couple of questions. Well, let's uh, get, get it over with. I'm a busy man. Questioning people like this can put unnecessary stress on them, depending on their position. This guy's pretty sharp. I have to play it safe. I only push him when I see an opening. Deki Arashi says he's a local historian. But supposedly he knows more about the Rite of Resurrection than anybody else. The fact that he's here at this time of night, it's plenty possible he's a curse bearer. Actually, hold, hold on. Is that why, Am I saying this right? Arashi. Hold on. Is it like Era Ishii? Funny. I'm actually looking it up. I typed in Era Ishii or Arashi or whatever. Ar Arashi. Raishi. Pronunciation. It didn't give me, it literally gave me nothing on Google. Thank you. Was, has nobody ever had that name before? You know what? Arashi. But that's Arashi, but without the I in it after the A. Fuck it. I'm just going to keep going with what I'm doing. 
Boss, let's ask Kadeki some questions. From appearance, it's hard to imagine a small, bookish, well-spoken man being very dangerous. But in this day and age, you never know. I should be careful. Now, Mr. Arashi, what were you doing here at this time of night? D doing research, of course. Day or night, information never sleeps. That's an admirable philosophy. You know, your research has been quite the talk around town. What was it that they were saying? You discovered something about some book. Uh, the Record of Fates, the Book of Fates, the Scroll of Fates, the Scroll of Dates, the Book of Dates, the Record of Dates, I think it's this, the Record of Fates. All right, you found some kind of ritual in the Record of Fates. What? Don't tell me you want to know how to carry out the Rite of Resurrection. To be perfectly honest, I'm tired of people asking me about it all the time. None of you even care about the local history. You just come crawling out of the woodwork when something interesting comes up. Looks like I hit a nerve. If you think you can force me to tell you because you're a policeman, you're sorely mistaken. Was the research you were doing just now also related to the Rite of Resurrection? Well, yes, that's right. What exactly were you looking for? I have no reason to tell you that. You would understand anyway. Was the research you were doing just now also related to the Rite of Resurrection? But, but yes, that's right. Oh, that's weird. Re wait, what? Oh, I didn't have a check mark. Next to it. I guess we have to keep. Oh, I guess we have to keep talking about the other stuff. Okay. Are you doing all this research so you can use the Rite of Resurrection yourself? Huh. You're a policeman. Do you really think people can be brought back to life? Everyone I meet, pitiful. Huh? See, so you don't believe in the right. Whether it's real or not has nothing to do with my research. Such things are better left to the occult freaks. Or so I thought. Huh? Things changed. It has become necessary for me to pursue the right. So now... Now I pray that it is real. What changed? I'm sure you can imagine the funds for my research. I receive a large amount of funding for seeking the right of resurrection. And if I find it, I'll receive a sum so great that I'll never have to worry about money again. Uh oh Then that means... Someone is sponsoring your research. Is that right? So what if they are? You have no idea how hard we work to secure funding for our research. I have no interest in teaching those children. Listen to me. I'll tell you one thing. Those experts you see writing provocative books or spouting nonsense on TV to try and get popular. All of them are just trying to get the money they need to do the research. With how popular the occult is, saying something even remotely spooky can lead to big money. What? But I bought your book! The pursuit of the unknown begins, first and foremost, with belief. I was so inspired by that bit! I do appreciate your patronage. Unfortunately, however, the occult is not my true interest. The fate of the unknown is to be destroyed by thorough research and deep consideration. No way. I can't believe it. You're surprisingly innocent. <laughs> then what kind of research do you want to be doing? <laughs> I'm sure it wouldn't interest you, but to put it simply. The focus of my research is how historical accounts transform into folklore over the years as they are passed down from generation to generation. What does that mean? Due to human bias, the account of any event is inevitably changed by the person communicating it. This is not necessarily done with ill intentions. It happens when someone tries to fill in the gaps in a story that lacks detail, or when something's left out or bridged because of the story's length, or when a story twists and shifts as it spreads through its oral tradition. 
Even when two stories are told about the same event, differences in culture and environment affect how it's told, changing its content. Silly little things can turn into terribly mysterious legends. My research is the study of how history, culture, and legend all influence each other. Ah, uh, I see. Take the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo, for example. Why are some of the mysteries seemingly about nothing particularly interesting? You'd think stories wouldn't last a decade, let alone hundreds of years. So why? Perhaps putting it that way piques your interest? I admit, I am curious. So that's what you've been researching all this time. Makes sense. As I said, it doesn't matter to me whether the right exists or not. If people in the Edo period believe that what was written in the record of fates was real, that's all I'm interested in. Huh. Oh wait. Anything? I'm making sure it's not some shit like a bird or something. Huh? No? See, it seems like we're actually- if I see my guy, right? My own guy that I'm controlling, and like look around the environment, I actually cannot look around at like, seemingly just like the background. It's like these interrogations. But I have to be realistic. The research I'd like to do is unfortunately not very lucrative. That's why I need to take some risk. This record of fates. Where'd you get your hands on it? The storehouse of an old private residence in the city. Just as the public was told. I'm unable to be more precise due to an agreement with my informant. Huh. Well, in that case, I think I might have a guess as to what it is you were looking for. The Seven Mysteries of Hanjo, Soul Dregs, Curse Stones, Curse Bearer. Well, you say he was hoping that the uh, the right resurrection is real, right? So, Soul Dregs likely. What? Damn it! If you know about that, then. Calm down. No need to get so defensive. Show Curse Stone, High Curse Stone. Show! We both want information, right? Why don't we have a nice, friendly chat? Uh, uh, curse Stone? You are a curse bearer! A leaf. It is the evergreen beach, then. Yep. Will you show me yours? This is mine. The ever burning lantern. Hmm. Interesting. Reveal curse details, hide curse details. I will revert reveal it, because you telling him that is just encourage him not to lie to me. I'll tell you this for free. The Evergreen Beach comes from a man who was hanged for spreading false rumors. But the accusations against him were unfounded, and he died cursing those who deceived him. Ah, so that is the resentful memory held within the Evergreen Beach. The memories of the Seven Mysteries are truly fascinating. If only I could collect them all. Do whatever you want, but you should know something. This stone of mine lets me curse anyone who tries to mislead me. What? But... So don't try and lie to me. I'll know. You... You would curse a citizen? You call yourself an officer of the law? That all depends on you. I don't want to use it if I don't have to. What is it you want? The curse stones are dangerous. I'd like to confiscate yours. E excuse me? B but my right! First, let me ask you one thing. You... You haven't used that curse, have you? No! Of course I haven't! I, I swear! I see. Good. Now, why don't you hand over that stone? Unless you'd rather just try using it on me instead. Damn you! I won't give it to you! I were to say that, what would happen? Would it be a crime? The police are aware of how dangerous the stones are. They could arrest you under the Article 1, Section 2 of the Minor Offenses Act. Or you hand it over, and all you lose is your secret ability. 
Think of what would happen to all your research if you were arrested. Fine. You would have the stone. Here. Curse Stone Acquired, the Everburning Lantern. So, so see, like, I got it, right? But it seems like he would have gotten it potentially by default. I don't know. I guess maybe my actual decisions as these characters is influencing them. It's not just the LT thing, which, I mean, I guess that makes sense because, I mean, the whole game's meta. I am controlling and deciding things here. But but it seems like the, the timeline was only ever deviating, right, when I decided to curse or not curse, right? And even then, sometimes the game didn't actually let me. File updated. All right. Uh, on a bone-chilling winter's night, one may happen upon a soba cart along, with the along the canal known as the South Waru Gasui. But there's something strange about this cart. No matter when one might visit, its owner is nowhere to be found. Yet the lantern that hangs from it stays perpetually lit, burning brightly even with no oil to fuel it. Should one attempt to put out the flame, it immediately roars back to life. However, there is also the tale of the never-burning lantern, another tale of the story in which the soba cart's lantern always remains dark, refusing to be lit. Kills by disembowelment, one who finds themselves trapped in the darkness of the curse echo. Okay, so yeah, he was the one to, ugh. So he, he was the one that killed, that died by, to Shogo in the dark uh, before. It's funny that we didn't actually see him at all, even when, you know, Shogo seemingly murdered him. However, this is actually not the curse echo that uh, killed Mio. I think that one is going to end up being the, like, one-sided Reeves, based on how she died. But it does kind of make me wonder, like, was the darkness that was in there, was that from the school or from the... I mean, it seemed like that was that was from a, someone's curse echo. I don't know. Does it, does it create darkness? Maybe this one doesn't. You just have to be in darkness for it to count, and then the other one makes it? Well, no, I, I don't know. I mean, if that were the case, then maybe maybe this wasn't the one to die to to Shogo. Uh, anyway, when Hajo was filled with a samurai residences, the spines of the shogunate lived amongst the townspeople to keep an eye on things. The Soba card in South Warigasui served as one of their outposts. They would communicate to each other in code by turning the lantern on or off. Tonight at 4 a.m. meant that someone would be having the last Soba of their life, and that their belly would be sliced open upon the next night. An unfortunate incident occurred in which a man attacked a woman in about a fury. He regretted deeply, even declined to invoke the right to defend his honor, but the deed was done. Still, he could not accept it. His rage at having been used by his damio boiled over, turning into a grudge he would never forget. Nearby, he saw a lantern quietly glowing in the night, and when the sixth bell rang, the man cut his own stomach open. Since then, the lantern could be seen alight before the soba cart had opened. It would flicker out suddenly, even when there was no wind blowing. As this unsettling phenomenon continued... The rumors sur surrounding it grew, and soon all were convinced that it was the man who cut open his stomach visiting from beyond. Huh. Ugh. Good choice. I look forward to seeing how your research pans out. Huh. <laughs> all right. Would you tell us everything you know about what's been going on? If you help us out, we'll give you all the information we've gotten after we solve the case. What do you say? In that case... Will you tell me about the resentful memories of the Seven Mysteries? I believe they are the key to the secret hidden in the Record of Fates. Sure, why not? I'll learn about them as I collect the curse stones. Oh, and look. And this is, this is where Shogo arrives. But he's not going to show up this time. Because again, that was only on after he did the curse. And that was... Only through my intervention. But thanks to you, we learn a lot from him. No wonder. Mysteries and right are all public information. He kept everything he knows about the other curse bearers and the source of the curse are here hidden. I was hoping he'd at least give us a clue about how to beat these curses. Oh, I see. Then we should be more aggressive next time. Really make them spit it out. And by we, I mean you. I'm guessing he wants to save this curse. He wouldn't have told us anything, no matter what we asked. But now we know where he hangs out. We can always send someone for him if need be. Right. Got it. I was surprised to hear that there are actually nine of the seven mysteries, though. Yeah. There's two extra curse bears we have to find. Oh, really? There are nine of them in total? Well, that's interesting. Oh. Uh -huh. Then what I was thinking might actually end up being right, right? I said, oh, maybe there's an extra secret eighth curse bearer, right? Mmm, maybe we are then. Maybe we, we are like one of the, the two secret ones, because those tales have not been accounted for in the seven mysteries of Hanjo. 
They've confiscated two, so there are six more. They could be anywhere in this town. We have to find them fast, and they may start using the curses. No, I think we're already too late. Huh? I didn't tell you this, but there were some soul dregs in Namagaki's curse stone. Really? Then he already killed someone with it? It's not much, so it probably wasn't a curse bearer. Shit. Interesting. So he actually was misleading me. I could have actually killed him there, potentially. Well, we know who did it. We can make arrangements to take him into custody. We'll let Paranormal Affairs pick him up tomorrow. For now, we'll continue our search. Right! On to the next place. We just have to cross them off the list one by one. Oh, but... Boss? Huh? Good to know we can use the Minor Offenses Act to arrest people with curse stones. But why didn't we do that with Namagaki? If we could do that, there'd be no need for the Paranormal Affairs. What grounds would a normal detective have to put a him under arrest? Oh, right. Yeah, I suppose that's true. Hmm. Oh, am I locked out of the rest? Interesting. This actually blacked out though. So wait a minute, hold on a second. But he did lie to me, right? He did lie to me. Hold on, have it, I swear. So... What the hell? Maybe he stole the curse stone from somebody else? That has to be it. If it's not a lie, then he must be... It must be that somebody else... He took the curse stone from somebody else who had used it. Though, I mean, are you able to use the curse stone of somebody that you took? Like, are you able to use that curse if you steal their curse stone? Does that even work that way? I don't think we even know, really. Huh. All right, well, now... Now he doesn't have it, so now we can go, uh... Uh, not get fucked up. All right, back to waiting for Mio. Mio's late. I've been waiting for 20 or 30 minutes, but there's no sign of her. Huh? Someone coming down the road. That's... Oh no, teacher, it's Mr. Arashi. Looks like an itch. I wonder what he's doing. Oh, and but he doesn't have the curse stone in his hand, so... Interesting. Like, how is this shit working? I guess I am still guiding people. It's not like this is the default scenarios after all, because otherwise he wouldn't have had it, right? I guess that means that these aren't the decisions that the people would have done by default, which means I, that there's actually no way for me to even know what the default path for anyone is. Seemingly, because even like show goes, I still made some decisions and talked a bit, I believe. I don't know. I think I'm just, I think I'm just how I'm thinking about this just isn't correct. I haven't haven't figured it out yet. Wait, he's the one who discovered the Rite of Resurrection. It wouldn't be strange for him to be involved with the curses. I wonder if he has a curse stone. Well, what do I do? But it's way past the 10 minutes Mio said she'd be here by. I managed to escape. I can't let that go to waste. I need to get out of here before anyone sees me. Oh, and this time he didn't see her. Hey, all right, we're out of here. Fuck you, Arashi. And we're back home. Oh, by the way, you guys, uh, you point out the, the term I was looking for was Sukabom. Sukaban. That's what uh, Yuki was, and also uh, her. It was like the, which basically is like tough girls or girl boss or something. By the way, you guys also point out, this is a good point. The little uh, chunky girl Mio looks a bit like Miwako as well. Just like how uh, Yako looks like Yuki. She's like a like a dark-haired Miwako. Damn, you're right. We got all the 30 Sentinels cast here, don't we? Ah, uh, I'm home. Thank goodness. I don't think the walk has ever felt so long. Nobody will be able to use their curse once it's out light outside. I need to go look for Mio as soon as it's morning. But for now, I need some rest. And I lived! Yako's friendship! Wait, what? Am I done? Wait, check my Steam achievements here. Oh, complete the Yako branch of chapter one. I guess I did. That's actually the end of her story? I mean, I guess I'm still in chapter one. All right, then I guess I can't go to the, with Tetsuo here. So I guess I gotta continue with uh, Haruwe. So, 
What next? The big question now is what the rest of the Curse Bearers are up to. Luckily, the Sumida River is a good distance from any of the Seven Mysteries. It's unlikely the other Curse Bearers will come all the way here. I can finally have a moment to think. I see. Alright. Excuse me. Hmm? Is gonna be. Oh, it is her. Strange woman. I've already got you. Where did she come from? It's like she appeared out of nowhere. I didn't mean to startle you. I'm terribly sorry if I've gotten the wrong people, but would you happen to be curse bears? Curse bears? What's that then? Um, it means someone who's gathering souls for the Rite of Resurrection. You have heard of the Rite of Resurrection, haven't you? Everybody's talking about it. Color me intrigued. Care to tell me more, Miss, uh, what was your name again? Oh, silly me. I'm a Yame Tono. University student. Yame Tono. No thing update? Person of interest? Now then? She says her name's Ayame. I guess she's around 20. She must be brave walking around alone this late. Or maybe there's more to it. He's hiding it well, but I guess this he's got his guard up. Could there be more to this girl than meets the eye? I should ask her what her deal is. There's more to the Rite of Resurrection than meets the eye, you see. So the best way to collect soul directs is to kill other curse bears. And that's about the size of it. I hope it wasn't too much to follow. No, no, I think I get the gist. Funny old world we live in, huh? So, are you saying you're one of these curse bears? No. Well, not quite. It's complicated. I'm not, but Yutaro is. Yutaro? Is that your boyfriend? Oh heavens no, just a friend. His full name is Yutaro Namagaki. We're... I suppose you could say partners in crime. Funny way of putting it. Ah, that must be it. She must be half of the young couple Richter mentioned. Hmm. So where is Yutara now? Well, about that. He's not actually a curse bearer anymore. Yeah. He's more like a former curse bearer. Former? How so? I don't really know the details myself, but apparently he lost his curse stone. Typical, right? He makes such a show of being a top student, only to flunk where it counts. So now I'm out here looking for curse bears myself. If you want something done right. What the hell? He lost it. How did he do that? I wasn't with him at the time, so I don't know exactly what happened. All I know is that he came back saying he didn't have it anymore. Although, well, it's strange that you'd probe into that of all things. I'm just a curious sort, that's all. Sorry if it's a touchy subject. Oh, I don't mind. I don't particularly care about keeping it a secret. Clearly. You talk to be a little irrational sometimes, so I have to keep a level head on my shoulders. Why'd you approach us? So anyway, mind if I asked why you thought I was a curse bearer? Oh, that. I'm terribly sorry. I was so rude. I saw the two of you out late at night, and I suppose I made assumptions. Gotcha. Sorry if we gave you the wrong idea. Out of interest, what was your plan if we did turn out to be curse bearers? Great question! And the answer is... I was going to ask you very nicely for your curse stones. And you thought we'd have given them to you just like that? Well, maybe not. But you know what they say. You never know until you ask. You must really love your boyfriend if you're willing to try something that risky. Oh, goodness, no. We're just friends. My life doesn't revolve around him, you know. Huh? You sure about that? Anyway, you want curse bearers, so I'm just bothering you, aren't I? Please ignore me. So what are you trying to do with this Rite of Resurrection? Well, Utara has his own plan all laid out. I don't know if I can get behind it, though. It seems... 
how do I put it? Self-centered? I mean, if you've got a chance to resurrect the dead, it would be a waste to not use it on someone that really matters, right? So I was planning to steal his curse stone at the last second and use it for myself. Well, until you lost it anyway. Oh, but don't tell Yutara I was going to do that, okay? I don't think he'd be happy to hear it. Of course. Keeping secrets is my business. Bye, aren't you dashing? She's an odd one, dude. Sounds like you really have your heart set on this ride. What were you hoping to use it on? Do you promise you won't laugh? Cross my heart. Well then, let me tell you my master plan. Prepare to be amazed. <clears throat> I'm an art student, you see. Woodblock prints are my specialty. Ukiyo-e in particular. ukiyo -e, huh? You must be a cultured lady. Really? Do you think so? Everybody says it's a strange interest for a girl to have. I like where Haru has like, said nothing so far. You know, people often think of ukiyo -e as some inaccessible, high-class art form, but that's actually totally untrue. Back in the Edo period, it was the art for the masses, amusement for the common people. So when you think about it, we feel exactly the same thrills from every brushstroke as they did back then. Isn't that fascinating? Huh. Yeah, I guess. And as far as I'm concerned, the undisputed king of ukiyo -e is the one and only Hokusai. Have you heard of him? Sure I have. He's famous. Didn't he live somewhere around here back in the Edo period? That's right! You're just as knowledgeable as you look! His 36 views of Mount Fuji are so iconic, they're the only works of his most people know. But Hokusai was so much more than just mountains and waves. That's only the teeny tiny tip of a veritable iceberg of work. I've gotta admit, I only really know him from those landscapes myself. Oh, don't worry about it. Anyone can learn. When Hokusai died at the age of 90, he left behind over 30,000 drawings. Holy shit. That's multiple drawings a day for 80 years. Amazing, right? So he kept on drawing right up into his old age, huh? Impressive. But even in his final years, he was never satisfied with his own work. His dying words were, Should heaven afford me but five more years, I shall become a true artist. Even on his deathbed, he still thought he had more to learn. He was already the greatest painter and artist of his era. Who knows what he could have done with more time? Well, that's what I want to find out. Hmm? Uh, ho hold on. Are you saying... Besides, he always said he wanted to move out of a hundred houses, but he only made it to 93. Isn't that just tragic? Oh no. Nuh-uh. No way this is going where I think it's going. Imagine the masterpieces he could create with modern techniques. I feel all dizzy just thinking about it. You've got to be kidding me. So, if I understand this correctly, you want to use the Rite of Resurrection to... That's right! I want to bring Hokusai back to life! Well, that's certainly a... novel idea. That's what she'd use it on. What a waste. Katsushika Hokusai. A master ukiyo oe artist, 1760-1849. Hokusai was active during the late Edo period, considered to be the golden age of ukiyo -e in Japan. Born in Hanjo, Hokusai spent most of his life in the area known as Sumida City. Among his most famous works are the 36 views of Mount Fuji in the Hokusai manga. Hokusai was a prolific artist from a young age and has left behind a wide variety of works, producing an estimated 30,000 pieces during his lifetime, Jesus Christ. Though the general popularity of the ukiyo -e declined during the Meiji era period, Hokusai remained a core figure at the center of the Japan... Japanese-me? No wait, Japonisme. Nizme? I actually don't know. Uh, movement, providing inspiration for countless artists around the globe. Despite his fame, Hokusai himself was said to be rather indifferent to money or decorum, and lived a life that appropriately resembled that of a whimsical and otherworldly scenes often depicted in ukiyo -e. Though he went by many names, he's in his later years, he took on the title of Gakio Rojin Manji, or the Old Ma Mad Painter. Hokusai lived to be 90 years old and never lost his passion for art. Damn, lived a long time. 
Oh gosh, is this the time? I should be going. I need to get my hands on a curse bearer before, before daybreak. Sorry for flagging you down out of the blue like that. Best of luck. What a strange woman. Okay. Ayame Tono. Ayame is a young woman who working with Yotaro Namagaki. Her love of Kashishika Hokusai's Ukiyo-e is so great that she wishes to be resurrected with the rite of resurrection. Ayame is a clever but calculating university student who only has time for her own interest. She is making the best of a recent boom in the popularity of female university students decided by their appearance across TV commercials and radio programs. Ayame is content to ride this trend so long as it allows her, her to get her hands on whatever she needs and wants in life. Damn. Recently, Ayame has figured out that older men will fall for her if she acts a little a little bit stupid. <laughs> uh, interesting. So she, she's putting on a bit of a show here for, uh, uh, for Richter, right? She was approached by Yutaro Namagaki in town, and although she was not attracted to him, agreed to date him because his family seemed rich. However, she does not think much of him as a human being and is beginning to grow bored of their relationship. Wow. Rather cunning, isn't she? Well, there goes trouble. If we're going after curse stones, we should keep an eye on her. Too, if we can. Why do you say that? Before she left, she wished us best of luck. She's got at least an inkling that we're curse bearers. My. There's a good chance we'll clash sooner or later. We're after the same thing, after all. You head on back to the mansion, ma'am. I think I'll tail her for a while. Oh. Okay, still going. No more curses. Haroi has received multiple reports about other suspected curse bearers. Although concerned about Ayame Tono, who is apparently also after the curse stones, she entrusts Richter to continue his investigation. 3 a.m. Oh, back to the mansion. She can be followed by this girl, maybe? Back here again. I left Richter to continue looking for the curse bearers and came home alone. The old Shigama Mansion. We built it here after the Great Kanto Earthquake. It always stayed the same all these years, even the war didn't touch it. I never liked it growing up. I always want to live somewhere more modern. Shigama Residence. Once a warrior clan with a mansion in Hanjo, now a dynasty of police officials, the Shigama family is one of considerable repute. The family estate was originally located some distance from the city, but the Great Kanto Earthquake of 1923 forced them to rebuild in a new location. The Shikama Mansion was at one time a bustling place where members of the social elite mingled. One year ago, however, the head of the house was struck with a sudden melancholy, and ever since their mansion has stood still as the grave. I could hear the wind rustling in the trees. She wouldn't be surprised if there was like a bird or something nearby. Hey, there we go. Yep. Burp. Uh, mocking burb. This was kind of... Got a helmet on. Cool. The ostracizer. Ah ha ha. I see what you did there. Ah. Will this really be enough to gather the soul tricks I need? What if nobody uses any more curses? I'll lose my chance to bring him back. I need to kill somebody. Go inside. Oh, Haroy's. That was it. That's the end of it. Okay. I always wish uh, a threatening phone call. After persuading Arashi, the curse bearer of the ever burning lantern, to give up a stone, Susumi and Areo have obtained three curse stones in total. They continue their investigation of the town in search of the remaining curse bearers. Four a.m. This is the furthest we've gotten. Road. Well, with this, we'll have a visit at every place connected to the Seven Mysteries. This is the last spot, huh? We've got nothing to show for it. Even though every last location looks suspect from top to bottom. Maybe we came at the wrong time. There might not have been any curse bears around. Sounds like we'll need to do another round before morning comes, then. Or maybe... Someone's been observing our movements. What? No way! It's just a thought. 
Either way, we should check out this last place. Let's up, we finally get a lead. Kinshibori Park. Oh! And there's Shogo fucking dead, bro! Whoa! What the hell is this? Is... Is he dead? Damn it. We were too late. This is a curse, too. I, hang on. I'm gonna call Sid. I'll leave it to you. I'm gonna take a look around. Shogo's fucking dead, bro! Boss, bad news. What is it? Another mysterious death was reported in the area just now. The medical unit and forensics team are on their way, but it'll be a while before they arrive. <sighs> this is bad news. So they got someone else. You think this is the work of a curse bearer? With suspicious deaths popping up one after another, we have to assume it is. Shit. Guess we'll be stuck waiting around for a while. Damn, look at this dude. Fucking dead, bro. Oh. Huh? Boss! That phone is ringing. Alright, let's look at this dead dude, though. A young man is 20, he's killed in cold blood. He's definitely dead, but I can't quite discern the cause from what I've seen. There are no obvious external wounds, but... What is that leaking from his mouth? Water? He drowned from air. He seems distracted by the phone. Boss, the phone. What about it? It's ringing. Sure is. Are you going to pick it up? Huh? Why would I? Why wouldn't you? It's super suspicious. Is that fucking ghost around here, by the way? I don't see anything. I checked the surrounding er surroundings earlier. There are no signs of a curse bearer or any curse echoes around. The ringing of the phone is the only sound coming through the quiet park. No, I'm not seeing any ghosties. Alright. Well, better go check it out. You're right. But be careful. It could be a curse. Hey, I said we! You said me to go alone! You're the one who's tough against this stuff. Don't worry, boss. You can do it. Go on now. Damn it. Uh, hello. Get your boy Park phone booth. Evening, Detective Susumi. How are things looking out there? Who is this? <laughs> I finally got him. The real deal! Detective Tetsuo Susumi himself! Ah, wait. That's Chief Inspector Susumi now, isn't it? You've come a long way since we last met. I asked you to identify yourself! Man, have you forgotten already? After all the time we spent together. What a time that was. As I recall, I gave you quite the runaround. Wait. Is this... Fumichika Nejima. What? Did you say Fumichika Nejima? Like the one from the Nejima murders? Oh. Hmm. So is that the the Janner guy? Doesn't sound I mean, if I, based on the way he's talking, it sounds nothing like the Janner dude, right? He ain't talking like this, eh? He doesn't have like this uh, accent. So I'm just gonna keep giving him kind of like the deep zero sounding voice until we see something. Ding, 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 you got it! I had a feeling that the great chief Susumi would remember me. I spent 20 long years in a cell thanks to you. That shit was not easy. You should be thanking me. Should have given you plenty of time to think and atone for your sins. <laughs> that it did. I've repented. My conscience is clean as a whistle. Bullshit. 20 years in prison doesn't even begin to make up for the shit you did. I don't know about that. After all, the justice system was gracious enough to grant me parole. What? 
This is the real Fumichika Nejima. I still have a grudge against me for arresting him. So is this payback? Damn it! What's your goal? Now, now, you gotta understand. I've repented! Seen the light! I've been a good boy since I was granted parole. I even got myself a job. I've been real serious about walking the right path. Well, that's very nice. Keep it up. But it was no good. When the opportunity arose, it was impossible to hold myself back. I knew I had to give you a little token of thanks or I'd never truly be able to have a fresh start. I don't know, man. It's like he's not talking in like, I ain't got time for this, but... Oh, no, wait, no, right there. Do you get what I'm saying? No, maybe he does. All right, you know what? Let's go Let's go with the voice I get, because I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be him, right? Do you get what I'm saying? No, thanks. I don't need anything. No need to do all that for me. Just trying to live a quiet life. Oh, it's no hassle. No hassle at all. It would be all too easy to just kill you. To tear you apart. But... That wouldn't be very satisfying. Certainly not after 20 fucking years of waiting. It's a long time to nurture a grudge. You fucking bet it is. I let it gnaw at me, grow inside me. Thought of nothing else. All that time, I play model prisoner. Dur the harassment those asshole guards threw at me. And I did it all for you, Susumi. So please, just accept my deepest and most sincere feelings. Sorry, but I'm afraid I don't feel the same way about you. Shut the fuck up! That attitude of yours is why I'm saving you for last! What are you planning? Whatever it is, bring it on. I'm not running away. I just told you I'm not coming for you yet! Pay attention when people talk, shithead! You see, this time, this time, I want to see you on your knees, weeping in despair, begging me for mercy. Wow, oh no, I'm so sorry, dear Nejima. Please forgive me, I won't do it again. Shut the fuck up! This is exactly why I've always hated you so fucking much! That yeah, was worth a shot. Did you really think that would save me, asshole? You must be crazy. Well, then we're both crazy. We got so much in common. We should be friends. Enjoy cracking your jokes while you still can. I'm gonna kill everyone you care about. One by one. Till there's no one left. Mm, so it's interesting. He says he killed somebody, but like... I'm kind of thinking, was he, did he still kill Mio then? Did he still find her or something? And kill her? Because that clearly actually was not Arashi's, Arashi's uh, curse stone, right? Or, or, uh, or uh, curse echo that was floating around because it, it didn't match his. So it was another one that also seemingly could produce darkness or I don't know. That, that one said that you had to be in darkness. It didn't necessarily, say it necessarily produced it. Sorry to disappoint you, but I'm a lone wolf. I don't have anyone like that in my life. Uh, boss, what about me? Or, wait, are you just trying to protect me? There's not a single person you care about. I wonder what your sweet daughter would think if she were to hear that. Don't you fucking dare! I'm warning you! <laughs> oh, very nice. This is more like it. She's living all alone on her own now, isn't she? Attending university and all. Such a good girl. Oh my. Don't tell me she just happens to live in Hanjo. What? She does? No, forget it. This isn't funny, asshole. I'm going to find you and make you pay. Ah, I love it. Keep going. I want to hear you lose your mind. It's music to my ears. <sighs> Fuck you. I look forward to chopping up your precious daughter. It'll be just like old times. I won't let that happen. How'd you find me? 
How do you know where, where I am? Ha <laughs> ha ha! That's my favorite part! The sound of confusion in your voice is to die for! Mmm, this is delicious! I can't get enough! I'm not telling you shit! Have fun racking your tiny little brain for it! Ha ha ha! Hmm, I guess I could give you a little hint. Go on. Well, you see, I have the one sided read. Hmm, it is. Okay, so it is him. It is. So he still, he still killed somebody. If it isn't Mio, is it somebody else? So it, he is the one that has that one. <laughs> Susumi, you have the Evergreen Beach, no? Najima, you're a curse bearer. You're using the power of the curse. Indeed, and what a peculiar curse it is. But that's where my hints end. <laughs> God damn it. The curse ago couldn't have fallen into worse hands. The funny thing is that I'm almost wondering if he wasn't initially already one of the people who got cursed, right? Like that's what happened all those years ago with him. But of course, if he gets another curse stone, not to mention the fact that he got locked away by Susumi, He's definitely gonna have like fucking bloodlust to that the curse can make use of, right? Yeah, one more thing we should discuss. In fact, it's the most important thing. I thought you were finally going to shut up. I'm already sick of you, so I'll pass. Oh, but you don't want to miss this. It's the main course. I could just go after your daughter, but something tells me you get bored. No, I'm good. You got me real fired up. You're in my head. Well done. But this is a gift Taylor made for you. I'm going to kill all the people you swore to protect. Every last person living here. You couldn't. Oh, but with this curse of mine, I can. I'll give you until dusk. By then, I could probably get a couple hundred people or so. And it'll be all your fault. Oh, it must be so hard to know they'll die all because of you. So tragic. It must be tearing you apart. <laughs> Don't fuck with me. There's no way an amateur like you can pull off a curse that strong. Unfortunately for you, I absolutely can. My curse stone is a particularly strong one, which means I can have my fun without needing no back one bit. It's almost like the Feast of Shadows was cast just for me. You're surprisingly well informed about this. Who was it that tipped you off? Mm, who knows? Then how about I kill myself first and ruin all your fun? What about that, asshole? Idiot! You think I'd call it off just because you were dead? There's no running away for you. <sighs> I'll find you. I won't let you get away with this, Nishima. You've got 12 hours. You really think your paltry little organization will be able to make a dent in my plans? Oh, the sacrifices made will be heavy. I can't wait to see you sobbing with regret. <laughs> And I'll even have enough soul dregs to pull off the Rite of Resurrection. How splendid. Wait, Najima, you're after the- Anyway, see you around. Bye-bye now. Well, shit. Yep, still crazy. Boss! Areo, did you catch all that? Nejima, what is he planning? Who knows? For now, we need to find him and get him into custody. Somewhere to HQ. But the fact that the seven mysteries are wrapped up in this is gonna make things tricky. You mean with Nejima being a curse bearer? Just our luck, really. It couldn't have been a worse guy. Sounds like his curse will be able to kill a lot of people at once. I'd like to avoid getting our investigators caught in the crossfire. We'll use them to find out where he is, but then we're going in alone. 
We should try to collect as many curse stones as we can before then. Let's hurry. Aye, aye, boss. Later. It was reported that a total of three suspicious deaths were discovered that night. Nejima's threats, along with the curses, were kept secret from the general public. However, the Hanjo serial killing still made international headlines following the death of police officer Hajime Yashimi. Wait, so, hold on, it was reported a total of three suspicious deaths were discovered that night? I'm guessing this includes Shogo. At Susumi's request, a large-scale investigation was launched into Fumichika Nejima's whereabouts. Susumi and Ereo themselves spent the rest of the night looking for curse bears in the area, but their search ended in vain. And with that, the curtain closed on that cursed night. Twelve hours to sunset. Whoa. Oh no, no, we're still going. It's not done yet. Susumi's investigation. 12 hours to sunset, I see. So the sun's rising, so by the next sunset, we have to essentially stop Nejima. Wow, this is crazy, dude. This is really cool. <laughs> this is really cool. All right, let's uh, check this out then. Hajime Shimi, Shimi's death, Nejima's threat of mass murder. The problems just pile up, putting the detective's goal of collecting all the curse stones in jeopardy. Susumi leaves Areo to handle the investigation while he catches a quick break. 9 a.m. Shogo's still hanging out here. Sorry for the wait, boss, but I managed to gather some information. Took you long enough. Hey, look, we're not all blue and stuff. We actually have fucking daytime. Oh, hey, look, and there's a thing on the ground. Couldn't see it during the day, I guess. Or the night. Mockingbird. Swanalope swoost. Oh, my God. Look at this. <laughs> Schoolgirl burb with a fro or something. Forensics has finished their investigation and the body's been carried away. Oh, but, but, but I, said, I said that. That's that said, we're still closing the park to the public, at least for the time being. This place was really giving me the creeps last time. It looks pretty normal now with the sun out. He's been up all night gathering information. Must be nice to be young and have that kind of energy. But I'm glad to have him on my side. Give me a chance to rest up. Things at the station were pretty hectic, but I managed to get some info. Let me fill you in. Thanks. The floor is yours. A total of three mysterious deaths were confirmed in the area, including the one in this park. Okay, okay, I see. So let's start with that one. I, I imagine that what, what we saw there was the end of chapter one, and this is probably the start of chapter two. The young man we found here. He's been identified as Shogo Okie. 25 years old, a regular old office worker who worked around here. He died of asphyxiation due to water in the lungs. He drowned. He drowned? In the middle of the park? That's not possible. It's got to be a curse we're dealing with here. About that, boss. Isn't this park associated with one of those seven mysteries, too? Yeah, the Whispering Canal. That's right, the Whispering Canal. It does seem like there'd be a link between a canal and a death by drowning, don't you think? Sharp thinking, Arreo. You're starting to get the hang of this. So let's assume they're related. What's next? Before that, the body of a woman was found behind a residential complex in Kamazawa. The victim has been identified as Tawako Hayashi, 29 years old. She was an office worker who lived in, on her own in the area. Someone we don't know. As for the cause of death, well... Yes? The entirety of her body was crushed by some kind of strong external force. No murder weapon was discovered in the area, but considering the way she was found, we're looking for something large, flat, and heavy that could have crushed her in one fell swoop. Hang on. Are you saying she was stepped on? Meaning, uh, the foot washing. Exactly. Crushing is the iron is the foot washing mansion's modus operandi. So that would have been, uh, Namagaki, but uh, had he killed somebody before we got to him? The place the body was discovered is also known to be related to the Seven Mysteries. Well, this is Namagaki's doing. Shit, I knew he'd used it. Judging by the amount of soul dregs, the victim was just a regular person, not a curse bearer. 
Guess we should report this to Paranormal Affairs. Got it. And as for the third victim, did we ask Namagaki before if he'd used the stone, though? And he said no? I don't know. I, I can't remember if he did. And if that is the case, then, and I still didn't use my my curse on him, that means that he was misleading us. If if that did happen, of course. He was identified as Koai Jonuchi, 32, a teacher at, Yama, uh, at Kamagata High. Oh, he's found in the school's courtyard. Mushirige guy! Cause of death appears to be external trauma from a fall or heavy blow. The impact crushed his arms and legs. Oh. Oh, shit. Yako fucking killed him after all. When the hell did she do that? She went home for a bit. Since he was found in the middle of a courtyard, he couldn't have fallen from the gymnasium or the main building. A teacher dying at school. Not just any school. Come, I got a house as one of the seven mysteries. Uh, that would be the, uh... Yeah, the Fool's Procession. Right. It's where the Fool's Procession is supposed to be. It's too big of a coincidence. We can't rule out the possibility that this death was also the work of a curse. I see. Either way, it seems all three victims can be tied to the seven mysteries. There's probably a curse bear at the center of it all, pulling the strings. But you've got a point. All these strange deaths do point in one direction. That's right. Hajime's case wasn't all that different either. He also died of mysterious causes in a place connected to the seven mysteries. Problem is that the timing doesn't match up. He died before the curses were activated. Yeah. Hmm. Could he have been hit by a different curse? One that didn't have anything to do with the seven mysteries. Hmm. Uh, that's a thought. But... If there, that were the case, we'd be dealing with a powerful practitioner. One who could pull off a curse like that without using a curse stone. There aren't many people in the, this day and age who could do something like that. Oh, really? I see. I don't know too much about that stuff. I'd be more surprised if you did. Well, look at these deaths. Seems like many of the curse bearers acted last night. But we can't rule out that there are more killings from which the bodies haven't been found. Yikes! I hadn't thought of that. But, there's one silver lining. Judging by my own curse stone, it seems that the curses can't be activated while the sun's out. Oh! That's great news! So basically we're safe during the daytime. Exactly. It's also likely why Nedjima gave us till dusk. Yeah. Ah, he must have known the curse stones wouldn't be used during the day. Or couldn't be used during the day. Either way, we still got till nightfall to settle this. It's time we flushed out the other curse bearers. Aye aye, boss. Let's do this. At the moment, we only know the identity of four curse bearers. You included. Hitara Namagaki had the foot washing mansion, and Hideki Arashi had the ever burning lantern. We got both of their curse stones. And then there's Nejima, who claims he has the one sided reed. Yeah, that about sums it up. Hmm. Notes on known curse bearers. Ah, interesting. But it includes Yako in here. This is this is our notes. This is our notes as the player, not the notes of of uh, Tetsuo. That's actually really cool, because he he wouldn't he can possibly know it was Yako. Better figure out who the remaining five are quick. How should we go about looking for them? There's no point in searching blindly without a lead. Let's focus on other things for now. Tracking down Nejima may lead us to the other curse pairs, too. Either way, he should be our top priority. He could do some real damage if we don't get him. I also want to look a little more to Yashimi. Got a feeling there's some, some connection there. Aye, aye, boss. Sounds like we got our work to cut out for us. I asked around Sumida's Community Safety Bureau, where Yashimi was stationed. It seems like he was investigating the apparent suicide of a girl named Michio Shirashi. Ah, uh, yeah. I heard about that. He was trying to determine whether it was really a suicide. Looking into the height of the building, the force of the impact, her wounds, all that. He must have suspected some kind of foul play, because he ordered a full investigation. But it had already been deemed a suicide, and his superiors told him not to go stirring things up. Huh. What was the evidence? Well, according to the report I found on his desk la last night, the body was found at the foot of a building, a ways away from the road. There was no evidence of vehicular collision, so it was ruled a suicide, but... 
but he thought there was more to it. Yes, a truck or other flat-faced vehicle traveling at high speeds could have inflicted similar damage. In other words, sometimes a traffic accident can look an awful lot like a fall. So there's a chance that it wasn't a suicide. What a terrible way to go. There were no brake marks on the road, meaning it would have been a hit and run. The vehicle would have hit her without slowing down at all. This is turning into quite the grisly case. But the vehicle couldn't have come out from a collision like that unscathed. Exactly. So I asked the traffic bureau to keep an eye out for any vehicles with frontal damage. But I haven't heard back from them yet. And I don't think they're looking very hard. So we've got no proof. That said, if it was a traffic accident rather than a suicide, it's possible that someone signs Yashimi because he was on the verge of discovering the truth. That's true. You think the driver is the one who did him in? Not quite. Yashimi had already talked to forensics in the Titanic Bureau, right? His death wouldn't have covered things up. Yeah, you're right on that. Even if the suicide was a cover for a hidden run, it doesn't seem like enough reason to kill a cop. <sighs> oh, that's right. Unrelated, but I got something else too. I managed to get a hold of Mishio Sarashi's address. Yashimi went there a bunch over the course of his investigation. Might be a good idea for us to drop by too. Good thinking. Hopefully they'll give us some more leads. All right, let's move on to the next topic. Remember the girl Yashimi met with the day he died? One Hitomi Akuda. Community safety didn't have any co correct information for her on hand. Not even an address. Well, they had their her parents' information, but when I called, they said they hadn't heard from her in a month. Lots of family issues from the sound of it. They even said they didn't want anything to do with her anymore. That said, she still goes to school once in a while, so we might be able to find her there. Not sure we really have the time for a stink out right now. But she could be a key witness. Can we have community safety track her down for us? We can ask, but it might be tricky to get, get it done today. For starters, come back out of high school is closed today. Ah, because of the teacher that died. That's right. All right, but it's not something we can do today. I may have to forget about it. Let's move on then. I got some information about Yashimi's fiance from Community Safety. Her name is Mai Mayu Shizawa, 27 years old. She works as a beautician in the area. Look, I even managed to get a picture of her. She sure is a beauty. But... Oh boy, here it comes. But what? Community Safety hasn't been able to contact her since Yashimi died. Not by phone or at her house. In other words, no response. Dead silence. There it is. Can't things just be easy for once? Oh, interesting. Mayu Shizawa. Mayu is a beautician and the fiance of Hajime Yoshimi, a police officer with the Sumida Police Department. Mayu's current whereabouts remain unknown. It's definitely starting to look a suspect. A crime of passion, perhaps? Huh? It is fairly common for people to be killed by a lover or a spouse. But Yoshimi was well liked. They've been together for over 10 years. You never know. Things could be different behind closed doors. I guess so. But we'll have to consider the opposite scenario, too. It could be that the same person who was out for his shimmy is after her fiance as well. She could be in danger. You're right. Either way, she's important to the case. HQ already has people looking for her. We'll know as soon as she's found. HQ has mobilized a search unit for Nejima. But so far, we haven't received any word. Guessing he wasn't at home or at work. About that. Apparently, the, he vacated his last known address a week ago. Are you serious? So we have no idea where he lives. It gets worse. I checked him with the factory he was working at. They told me he was only there for a month before he quit. Hold on a second. You're telling me nobody caught that? Well, I had the same thought, so I spoke to his probation officer. Turns out he'd been doing house visits and interviews, but never bothered checking on his workplace. He also said he'd lost track of Nejima when he moved to a new place. Jeez, that's just sloppy. 
I've heard that they're giving parole to just about anyone these days because they're running out of room in the prisons. Oh, I see. I wonder if that's, was that a real problem in Japan at, uh, at some point or something? Which also means there aren't enough probation officers to go around. He's probably overworked. So Najima got to fuck about unsupervised. God damn it. That asshole is annoyingly good at faking remorse. Or insanity. Or whatever the situation calls for. Back when I arrested him all those years ago, just talking to him left a bad taste in my mouth. He's probably hiding under a false name, which will make it hard to track him down. Now explain why you so brazenly make contact. That asshole. He's mocking us. Well, for now, the paperwork to circulate his name and mugshot is being filed. That's gonna take way too long. We only have until dusk. Speaking of Nejima. Yeah? Did you manage to reach your daughter? It'd be best to put her into a protective custody as soon as possible. Not yet. I can't reach her. They called, but she's not picking up. Wasn't home when they went to the house, either. That's not good. Does that mean she never came home? And why were you the one trying to reach her? Shut up. I don't have her contact info, alright? Damn. She really doesn't trust you, huh? Either way, I told her mother that it was an emergency and that we'd send an officer to find her and get her to safety. She was real reluctant, but I got her to agree. I guess that explains why you got divorced. But if you, her former father, can't find her, how the hell did Nejima do it? Former, huh? That cuts deep. Yikes, sorry. Just kind of slipped out. Anyway, I suspect it has something to do with his curse, Echo. Back on topic already, huh? He says curse could kill a lot of people in a short time. It may even allow him to act from a distance. I see. The one-sided read. What was that story about again? Something about a man stalking a woman who goes insane and chops her up. Ah, right. One of the more gruesome of the seven mysteries. You're probably the most gruesome. As for Nejima's whereabouts, all we can do is throw more people at it until we find something. I'll check in with HQ frequently to see if they've got any updates. And that's about it. Shall we continue our investigation? We should go to Kamigata High School to look into Hitomi Akuda, or to Mishio Shirashi's house to find out more about her. Ooh, Jazzy. <laughs> Cool. Oh, and Haroi's still going too. All right, it's not over yet, Snake. It's not over yet. This is really good, man. Oh my god. I think I'm. I think out of all the the scenarios here, I'm actually liking Tetsuo's the best. His feels the most like like the main character because he's the one like trying to stop everything and actually look for all the different curse bearers. Oh man, things are getting really good. I'm really enjoying the uh, the flow of the story and just how like. I don't know, seemingly one branch affects the other in some way, and, uh, oh, I got achievement for something. What did I do? Veteran investigator? Accumulate 10 hours of play. Oh, I've already, wow, cool. Look at, go me. Damn, I'm good. I really, I'm working hard here. Thinking and less playing. But yeah, it's, I, I'm still have yet to sort of understand how this fucking plot line or timeline and meta bullshit is working, because how does it that I, I went to Yako's side and Arashi saw the curse stone, and then if I control Tetsuo, seemingly he doesn't and it's like so that i mean am i actually controlling him that's not what would have happened by default anyway does that mean there's just no way for us to even know what what actually would have happened by default in the story because up to this point i really thought everything that i was doing was gen like the real choices to be made here were, were the actual cursing of people and that everything else kind of just went on its own like that's what was going to be said in any in any given moment i mean grant i guess there are occasional moments where i have to answer a question that isn't repeated again right but again, I don't know if that, that doesn't ever really affect anything, at least not usually. But anyway, guys, I hope you all are enjoying this as uh, much as I am. If you are, please do leave a like and a favorite. It really does help me out. And subscribe for not already become a picky penguin. I'll boy the SLP, where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. And as always, guys, till next time, stay classy.